welcome back to Destiny 2. So in this video, I am going to be covering the season of the chosen so far, what they have revealed, roadmaps, details, a little bit more in-depth reviews of what should be coming thanks to Bungie themselves off of their website. So if you wish to go see this in person, uh, of course, just follow Bungie. They'll have to go to the Bungie.net website and you'll find the season of the chosen tab right there on the front. So starting from top to bottom, Starting for the story, the new Empress with the pyramids and Zivu Arath destabilizing the system. Empress Kaito, leader of the Kabbalah and daughter of Kallus, seeks an alliance. But when she demands more than Zavala can offer, negotiations collapse and guardians must become the tip of the spear to strike at her growing war council. Or council, excuse me. So that is what was obvious from the trailer. Obviously, she proposed an alliance. We said no. Things went bad from there. But here's something that wasn't so explained. Welcome to the Helm. Designed as the ultimate vanguard staging ground, the spaceport provides the resources guardians need to face the most power, powerful of, in, of incursions. Here, the war table has been set to meet with Zavala, acquiring the hammer of acquired the hammer of proving and orchestrate an honorable victory. So, I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to be. It looks like a new section of the tower, from what we can see in the background, a new vanguard official table, maybe. But at the same time, you can see the city in the background, but at the same time, uh, well, I was going to ask whether or not it was a social space, but if it's in the tower, then it probably is because I'm a fool. So moving forward, it gives us a little bit of details on Battleground. The fallout from the failed treaty has resulted in Cabal forces taking up arms on multiple destinations, prepared to defend the glory of the Empire. In this three-player matchmade activity, Guardians will engage in ritual combat against Kaito's chosen warriors. And they, of course, give us a few screenshots of various enemies. We have uh, the uh, shot of the three Guardians fighting off just against the Wave Cabal, some Incinerators, some Legionaries. And, of course, we see in the background a little bit more deep, uh, another one with some more detail. We have a pretty big Colossus there. And looking closer, we can see uh, the bow and one, I believe, the Hunter's Hand. We see the submachine gun and, or I should say, the Season Pass bow, a random bow, then Titan and everything with that one. And of course, with our last one, we just see a random Cabal Mind Flayer, I believe it is. but Or Scion, Scion Flayer, excuse me. But of course, moving forward. Then it covers Vanguard Strikes, which are free to all players. It includes the Devil's Lair, to find and destroy the single exalted servitor that sustains the House of Devils in the Cosmodrone. And with Fallen Saber, rush to the aid of the AA Warmind Rescue as he broadcasts a plea for help across the system. And a brand new strike between one and Destiny One and Two, the Proving Grounds. The champions of humanity face the champions of the Cabal to determine the fate of the last city. So I'm curious about Saber and uh, Sepix, just because of the fact that when it came to the Will of Prota, Omnigol, she was given a new name, a new de designation instead of Omnigol, it's Navoda. It, the strike is pretty much the same with a little bit of repro with a little bit tweaked for Destiny 2. You know, enemies, numbers, champions, and occasion. I'm curious how they would change Devil's Lair and Saber because obviously we know Rasputin is well, we've figured out since then Rasputin was on Mars. He's currently shut down. Kind of maybe in an exo. This of course the it, he was fragmented, but I'm going on to one. Basically, I'm curious how they change it. Because supposedly the House of Devils melted into the House of Dusk at Destiny 2 Vanilla, and so, you know, questions. And of course, for exotics and gear, at the front, I am super, super excited, because we have a redacted exotic quest for Tex Machina. Now, for those that don't know, my favorite weapon for Destiny 1 was always the first curse. It was essentially the antithesis of the last word, instead of fast firing, uh, low powered rounds, it was slow firing high powered rounds. It was the exact antithesis of what the last word should have been. And I will be super happy to see if my baby hand cannon is brought back into this game. I would super love it. Aggressive just got buffed and that counts as an aggressive. So it will dominate in my hands. But also we get the exotic bow Tikus Divination. I think that's how you pronounce it. Or a Tisus. The Ancient Recurve Bow charges multiple solar arrows that can track several targets at once. So I thought it might just be Solar Trinity Ghoul, but it sounds like it's going to be a tracking bow. Um, if what I if actually tracking means track, or if track actually means tracking. But of course, 
We also have weapons and ornaments, a cache of new and reissued weapons to collect exotic, legendary, and ritual, over 25 weapons added to the loot pool. And from the screenshot, we see a sniper, a rocket, what appears to be a linear fusion, the submachine gun, a bow, and maybe some other things, maybe a sword, as well as a sidearm. So far from what we've seen from the battle pass as well, the linear fusion and the sidearm are the battle pass weaponries. Oh, of course, as well, Umbral Engrams will be coming back, uh, Prismatic Recaster and Umbral Engrams will be coming to stay and stay a while, so we will be good for that. And it covers what our seasonal artifact would be, the Bell of Conquest. Used to celebrate the triumphs of the warrior who carries it, the Bell of Conquest increases your power every time it is upgraded. Unlock new seasonal mods and customize your playstyle. Another new interesting thing with each season, what new mods came about. And of course, it tells us to unlock the season pass, you get the bow, XP boosts, and various things, usual stuff, and the armor set this time around is Pref Prefectus armor set, which is the basic, and of course, looking through each area, we see that what it comes in the season pass, I'm just going to go ahead and put little screenshots of each area, if you want to look at them, I can't really investigate what they are, I can only see the, uh, Images even if we mouse over. So we see here at tier 30, we have linear fusion rifle. We see at tier 35, that's when free to play players unlock the new bow. And then, of course, at tier 45, we get the sidearm with various new additions. Of course, same thing. And new, we got a ghost 50. Various armor ornaments start popping up in the 60s. And moving forward, a bunch of exotics, new ornaments, ascendant shards, a lot more ascendant shards this time around. And of course, at the final tier, we get our ornament for our seasonal weapon but of course moving forward it also tells us what is all included with season of the chosen so i'm going to really quick tell what all the free-to-play players have and that is three or new weapons and ornaments the three new strikes the helm area the new exotic cosmetics that come with each season which which is just the random ones from eververse Umbral Engrams, the new Triumphs and Seals, the Guardian Games will be coming back again because it's that time of year, at least I think. Iron Banner, Trials of Osiris, and the new Artifact and Season Progress tracks with um, the free tier. But as well, the Season Pass owners will unlock the Battlegrounds Matchmade Activity, new Exotic Cosmetics, Umbral Engrams, Seals, Guardian Games, and everything I just said, and include the second uh, premium tier of the Season Pass, the Exotic Bow, Tiku's Divination instantly, the armor set instantly unlocked bonus XP, weapon quests, weapon catalyst quests, and one uh, week early access to pro the Proving Ground Strike in addition to exotic ships and sparrows because of the new stuff and suite of prismatic recaster focusing features. Generally some extra stuff. But as well, for Bungie Rewards, if they're lucky, a guardian finds himself with a memento of a journey filled with honors. Some are elegant symbols of great triumphs, and some, some, well, are just adorable. Log in to view all the Season of the Chosen Bundy rewards as they become available, including the seal pin, which I need to make sure to get for this one because I missed out on, I missed out on uh, Forerunner, so I need to make sure that I get my hands on the Warden and uh, whatever the new Chosen frame is, as well as the Penguin Surveyor. If, I think if you collected all of them, you can get a new one. But what we're all here for is the official roadmap in addition to everything. So of course, they tell us available what is available to everyone, what is available to Season of the Chosen Battle Pass owners, and for those that just have Beyond Light. So right off the bat, Behemoth and Hailstone Battlegrounds will be unlocked to Season of the Chosen uh, on February 9th as soon as this launches next week as well as Devil's Lair, Fallen, Saber Strikes, and the Helm will come online day one. And those are to everyone for the Strikes and Helm, like, like I said not long ago. But something not told, we get new stasis aspects come uh, next week, whenever this starts. That is just for the people who own Beyond Light. So if you are not free to play, but you do not have the season pass, then you do not, and do not have but uh, if you just have Beyond Light, but not the season pass, you get your stasis aspects. So there will be something to do. But as well, that following Friday, granted no one breaks the game like they always do. Trials should begin that Friday. That is free to all with new armor, new weapons, and more to be seen. And come next Tuesday, the Cleansing Battleground will unlock to the season pass owners. 
And then come that February 23rd, which I believe is another week later, Iron Banner starts up for all players, and including the Oracle Battleground for Season Pass owners. And then March 23rd, a whole month later, the Proving Ground Strike, which is the new strike that will be coming, will open for Season Pass holders, and then Iron Banner for everyone. In addition, a week later from that, the Proving Ground Strike enters the playlist to all players. So we get it a week early, as well as it and be introduced to the Nightfall on my birthday, believe it or not, March 30th is my birthday. So that is a funny little addition. Y'all can get that for free. But I'll be watching Gods of Love vs. Kong later, so no biggie. And as well, the next Iron Banner will be two weeks later, if I had to guess dates right. And that's another free to all players. And of course, Guardian Games will kick back off again from April 20th to May 9th. And the last two days will be closing ceremonies, whatever those do entail. We're not exactly sure. But of course, there will be more to come that we will not know. That is just what has been shown for now. So, if you are excited for Season of the Chosen for any reason, personally mine is the new text Machina quest. But of course, if you're excited, just be excited. We got new stuff coming. It's interesting. This story looks like it's going to take a turn for the cooler because, you know, Keitel has been mentioned all the time. If you look at Air Parents, uh, Lord Tab, she, she's mentioned, but she's never shown her face. We knew she's been there, but now she's finally rearing her head, and she seems like a compelling villain, just like Aramis. So, with that, my name is Matt Scorpion, and I will see you in the next video.